With the Great Awakening happening right now on the planet, so many people waking up in the world, so many of the old power structures are falling away so that something new and more powerful that's more in alignment with the energy that's here today. But there's a lot of things falling away and it can sometimes be a little bit fearful. To protect yourself, you might be under your kitchen table. You might put on a tinfoil hat, but I'm here in this video to share with you you don't need any of this for protection. I'm gonna share with you what you need to know for 2021 with The Great Awakening, how you can protect yourself in the real way without imposing fear, and this really is the key, I think, for so many people. Speaking of tinfoil hats, have you ever wondered why people even used to wear the tinfoil hats? Like, what is the belief behind it? Let me ask Siri. Hey Siri, why did people used to wear tinfoil hats? What it says is, it's often worn with the belief or hope that it will shield the brain from threats such as electromagnetic fields, mind control, and mind reading. Interesting, okay, so with the great awakening that's happening right now on the planet, there is a lot of manipulation going on in the world just in general. I'd say that there, this is gonna sound kinda out there, um, but I'm just gonna go out and say it. I think there are people on the planet that know that there's this collective consciousness. There's, uh, you know, billions of us on the planet and we're all connected. And when you have a lot of people believing in certain things, it makes it a little bit easier to remain control, to remain in control. And what has happened is the Great Awakening is about there's so much stuff going on in the world and there's so many old power structures falling away that now there's people that are just organically waking up. They're waking up to realizing that there's more to life than what we've priorly thought, that we're eternal spiritual beings living temporary human experiences, and that we don't necessarily need to buy into everything we're being told from authority. It's kind of an interesting thing because even people that are into the spiritual information, my grandma, for example, she's never really been into the super spiritual information that I share on my channel or anything like that, but even her is kind of is questioning things like yeah I think I, I don't believe this or I you know she it's very interesting a lot of the beliefs that people have and the things they're not buying into anymore because they're starting to see through the veil they're starting to see through the BS that's been projected for such a long period of time if tinfoil hats aren't the way to go about you know protecting ourselves then what is the actual way to go about it well what I will say is that when we feed the fear and when we go down sometimes even little rabbit holes of information, the more fear we infuse into the power dynamics of other people, the more powerful that they become. My buddy told me about this movie called Merlin. I haven't seen it, I wanna watch it though. But he says it's about like almost a Dumbledore looking guy, uh, like a magician, and he's trying to defeat this, this evil person. And any time he is trying to combat this person, when he's, when he's fighting them, it's actually feeding them. Now the interesting thing about this is it works very similar when we talk about the Great Awakening. There are different organizations or groups or whatever we want to call it that the more energy we feed them with fear, the more we grow and the more powerful they become because when we're in fear, we're much easier to control. When it talks about a lot of the stuff that's happening in the world, I think that there is a energy, there is something that certain people know that when people are in fear, they're much easier to control, so they like to keep the narrative, the belief system out there of that. And I think what's happening too is so many people in the planet are becoming aware of their own power, and if we were to get together collectively and meditate or envision a future of something that we would want, that would be the opposite of what's happening on the planet with the people that I think know that energy dynamic. And the thing is, is they wanna retain power, they wanna retain control. But if we were to come together as one and we were to have a certain focus on certain timelines, on certain things we want to experience, I think it would completely divert that because there's more power in unity than there is in separation. And right now, the key for them, I think, is to keep things compartmentalized, to keep things in separation. And when they do that, that keeps the power sporadic. And that keeps people in fear and that keeps people from knowing their true power, their true worth. So with this though, one of the biggest abilities they have is they they like the fear so when we are imposing fear onto it we're actually growing it so that Marilyn movie that I was mentioning a second ago what happened is every time he would fight this evil person it she would grow she would grow and she would grow the only way he learned to combat her to actually win is he had to stop feeding her with energy 
he had to stop fighting her. Now in the same way with the Great Awakening, the more energy we put on all the craziness, the more energy we give and the power we give to that of the media, the more we are feeding that timeline, the more that we are also finding ourselves, you know, experiencing more and more of that. Think about it as far as like, the brain, the somatic connections in the brain, the more we become wired to the chaotic, chaoticness, the more we're gonna be primed to see that in our own life. And I think that energetically we're all connected and if we were to set a unified intention on that of positive outcomes, we've done some mass meditations before, but I think that it is so powerful when we do that. So one of the most important lessons is that I know it can be very uh, mentally stimulating to study some of the, the theories going on and, and the power dynamics, but the one thing I wanna share with you is the more energy and fear we put towards it, the more we are growing it. So instead, think more of your own vibration and your own energy and you doing what you're passionate about and realize that this only has power over you, the, the energy you give it. I don't watch the news. I know there's stuff going on in the world, but because I don't watch the news, it doesn't drain my energy. And I'm able to then make videos. I'm able to then make podcast episodes. So one of the most important parts of this process is realizing first off, the belief that the media puts out there, the fear that we've all bought into is what makes this all real, is what makes us believe in it even more and brings more and more of that probabilities into our lives. So the key to this is stop feeding it and to realize as well that the more energy we give towards other factions, the more energy we fight with it, the more we are creating it. If we were to more so um, focus on our own vibe, it would, it would change everything. And if we were to come together with unity. Now, one of the other things I want you to realize for 2021, this is more just an energetic, energetic thing in general, is what I've been realizing is that so many people are learning this new thing. It's called boundaries. It's not a new thing. But... For 2021, you're gonna realize that you need to build boundaries around other people who maybe in the past you've given them a lot of power, you've given them a lot of energy, and you need to start doing what is best for you because when your cup is full, that's when you can really add value to other people. So drawing boundaries in 2021 is gonna be extraordinarily powerful. You may have found yourself being a people pleaser. You may have found yourself um, saying yes to things you didn't really want to do. You might find yourself um, having people around you that are draining your energy. Your vibration is drawing boundaries. The only reason you'd feel guilty doing that is if you think that you weren't worthy of having those boundaries drawn or you weren't worthy of taking care of yourself. If people are asking you to come hang out, if people are asking you to, to give them, give you, they want you to give themselves to them and you realize that you want to focus more on yourself then you could start realizing you don't have to identify. It's not your job, it's not your responsibility to fill up other people's cups before you fill up your own. Fill up your own, draw boundaries. You must have boundaries with the media. You must have boundaries with these different things in your life and even the people you're around that might be lowering your vibe. And those boundaries are gonna help you immensely. I've learned boundaries these last couple of months more than I've ever learned in my life and it has been completely life transforming. And also because you realize it's a whole new world. You can, when you start drawing boundaries, you realize that you always had the choice, but you never chose it because of guilt or because you thought you weren't worthy of it or whatever it is. But when you start realizing it, it is so powerful. So boundaries in 2021 are going to be huge, but realize that like Marilyn, anything you feed, if you're fighting it, you're feeding it. If I had an analogy right now, I'd use a pendulum. If you had a pendulum, the more you, the more you, you move it, the more chaotic it is, the more momentum it builds and the more it grows. But the way that you diffuse a pendulum is you observe it, but you don't energetically feed it. You don't get emotionally charged about it. You realize that everything is happening right now for a reason. Things are falling away and it's allowing more and more people to wake up than ever before. The more we feed the fear, the more that grows. The more we are neutral and we realize that this is a part of a process of waking up, the more power we internalize within ourselves, but then also the more boundaries we draw, the better. The thing I'd encourage you to do is to be going out to your passion, to realize what you're passionate about is what you're meant to be doing. The more that you do that, the more that you commit to that vision, the more you develop a boundary around that vision, the more momentum you will feel, and the more you're gonna be able to grow that within your life. And then as you have boundaries, you're gonna feel more safe within your own body, within your own container, and then you're gonna be able to see and have more of things that you can say no to, like 
different forms of media, like um, different information out there that you could feel is lowering your vibe. So protection, they say as well, you don't really need to protect yourself when you are in a high vibration. So it's not so much about making a barricade, putting yourself under the, the table and wearing a tinfoil hat. More so than that, what this protection is about is you resonating at a high frequency by doing your passion, having a neutrality practice, which means observing your thoughts for a couple minutes a day. And as you raise your vibration, you will only perceive of things that are equal to that vibe. That's how it works. There's no protection needed. And think about it. When you think you need protection, it's almost re-emphasizing fear. It's re-emphasizing that there's something that's coming after you. It's emphasizing that reality. But when you more so are having the awareness that if you exist in a high frequency, you just won't, you just have a belief that you're taken care of when you're in a high, when you're a high vibe, then you won't worry about having to protect yourself in that way. I think sometimes it becomes a double-edged sword. It's like, oh, I gotta protect myself. I gotta do all of this stuff in order to, to maintain in a high vibe, but that protection is infusing a reality that says that there's something coming after me and there's my, my vibration is so brittle that things could happen. So have trust in knowing that really this is about letting go. This is about letting go of the old things that you used to maybe pay a lot of attention to, letting go of the guilt around not setting yourself boundaries, letting go of maybe doing something you're not passionate about and starting to wire in a new reality of you doing what you're passionate about, with you having boundaries, with you not feeding the fear, realizing that our energy collectively connected is the most powerful thing and we could start to envision a reality where we are powerful, where we are unified, and that could be extremely powerful. There is a meditation I have on raising our vibrational set point permanently. It's in the top of the description box below. It's one of my most powerful meditations. Check it out, listen for 21 days. Watch how it changes your life. If we all come together and do this, let's all commit to this for the next 21 days. Let's watch what happens. Let's watch what happens within our own vibe. Let's watch what happens within the collective because there's many of us that can begin to connect together and that's part of um, some things I'm working on right now is a creating something so that we can do that. Um, if you wanna learn more about that, you can text me the word Vortex, V-O-R-T-E-X, to the number 424-304-0104. You'll see it below as well. You can text me that um, and uh, I'll send you more info on that. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I got a lot of more cool videos coming. And as always, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace, much love, and namaste.